Upon laying eyes on my sister-in-law for the first time, my initial impression was that she exuded an overwhelming charm, boasting remarkable features. Greetings, Catherine here. Pleasure to meet you, she chimed in with an air of sophistication. Despite my initial desire to form a connection with her, that sentiment rapidly dissipated in the ensuing moment. Who's this elderly lady? Is she my brother's wife's mom? The ambience took a turn for the tense when my sister-in-law not only cut short my salutations, but also dubbed me an old lady. From that day forward, my days took a turn for the night nourish. My name is Katherine Johnson, a mundane 30-year-old housewife. Four years ago, I was a career-oriented woman, immersed in my professional endeavors. No need to brag, but my popularity at the office was undeniable. I garnered accomplishments, admiration from subordinates, superiors, and clients alike. My husband, Bob, was among those who admired me. Our friendship blossomed from business meetings, sparked at a party hosted by Bob's company. He wanted to verify the rumors about me firsthand and decided to join a business meeting. Initially skeptical, he fell for my robust core and way of life. He believed I was the one for him. When I learned about Bob's determination to win my affection, I found it endearing like something out of a high school romance. Little did I confess, I have a secret crush on him too. Bob's striking features and popularity among women made him my type. After numerous dates, we married, and our married life was an idyllic journey. Each morning, as I prepared breakfast, Bob would wake with a gentle smile, uttering a warm good morning and enveloping me in a hug. It became a cherished daily ritual. Despite his older age, his childlike behavior stirred my maternal instincts. Furthermore, Bob and I never quarreled. He remained unfazed even when I accidentally broke a cherished plate. His concern was more for me than the broken piece. His kindness never ceases to amaze me. Both of us yearned for a child, prompting me to leave my job to focus on starting a family. A child born of Bob and me was destined to be adorable. I found myself immersed in constant contemplation of names, especially if we were blessed with a girl. Time swiftly passed, and this year marked our third anniversary. Although we hadn't been blessed with a child, our happiness remained intact, save for one aspect, Bob's family home. Bob's mother and younger sister occupied his family home, as his father had succumbed to cancer before our marriage. His mother, always cheerful, had been exceptionally kind to me. I attributed Bob's kindness to his mother. However, his sister was an entirely different story, and my dislike for her traced back to the time of our first meeting. Reflecting on that introduction, my initial impression of her was of a charming person with striking features akin to Bob. Fleetingly, I entertained the notion of getting along with her, but that sentiment dissipated instantly. Nice to meet you. I'm Catherine. I greeted upon our first encounter. However, she promptly interrupted, disdainfully questioning, Who's this old lady? Is she my brother's wife's mom? The atmosphere turned icy when she labeled me an old lady, and my attempts at cordiality were met with cold indifference. My sister-in-law didn't bother reciprocating the greeting, prompting Bob to step in with a sarcastic introduction. Her response was one of fiend surprise, questioning my age with a condescending tone. 27? No way. Seriously, that's hilarious. I thought you were like 50. You really look old. Her comments were outrageously out of line, leaving me genuinely questioning her relation to Bob. She unabashedly scrutinized me from head to toe, making snide remarks about my appearance. Your clothes are so out of style, you're overweight, your nails are unkept, and more. In response, I silently observed, Bob's hands trembling with suppressed rage. Eventually, he snapped, a rare occurrence, admonishing her for her extremely rude behavior. Her retort was dismissive. Ugh, you're so annoying. Totally killed the mood. Her blatant nastiness extended beyond me, as she would make similar snide comments to both Bob and their mother. Despite enduring her behavior for years, Bob and his mother apologized to me for her unwarranted actions. Later on, despite them not being at fault, they continued to apologize. I felt sympathy for them, 
Yet anger simmered towards my sister-in-law for her hurtful remarks to her own family. To minimize contact, I decided to cease visiting Bob's family home. Information about my sister-in-law trickled through their mother, but she hadn't caused any harm directly, so I continued living my life peacefully. However, a single incident shattered my content daily routine. Bob's mother approached us with a favor. She planned to move to a senior housing facility with assistance in six months due to a back injury. It was evident that my sister-in-law was to blame, as she wouldn't lift a finger to help their already frail mother, making her carry heavy bags. Despite the mother's deteriorating health, she wouldn't kick out her daughter, a testament to a mother's boundless love. Although I was willing to support the mother, the catch was living with the sister-in-law, a prospect I dreaded. Unfortunately, for the sake of the mother's health, I reluctantly accepted that the sister-in-law would come with the package. As anticipated, living together became a nightmare from morning till night. My sister-in-law spewed venom, especially towards me. Criticizing my cooking, she'd declare, this tastes so bad. How can you even make such trash? You're weirdly talented. Even when folding her clothes, she'd find fault and demand proper ironing. Her attitude resembled that of a rebellious teenager. During room cleaning, her sharp comments persisted. Hey, there's still dust over there. You're pretty much the maid here, so do it right. You're so useless. Despite her inactivity, she never hesitated to point out flaws. I silently yearned for an escape from this hell. As I continued cleaning, she added insults about Bob's apparent inability to manage household chores, suggesting we should have a child. Infuriated, I couldn't let that comment slide, breaking my silence. The situation was too much to bear, but I refrained from saying anything more, almost paralyzed by the terrifying look on my sister-in-law's face. It felt as if she regarded me with utter disgust, and the pressure was so intense that I involuntarily looked down, overwhelmed with fear and a sense of impending doom. The emotions swirled inside me, and all I could manage was holding back the tears. My sister-in-law left the room with a smug laugh, leaving me shaken. On another day, she returned home in a great mood, boasting about her boyfriend's proposal. She proudly described him as tall, handsome, and high-earning. In a brazen move, she approached me, mocking my inability to have children. Losers like you should fulfill their roles as women by having kids, she sneered. The familiarity of her mocking tone was shocking. She didn't spare Bob and my mother-in-law, provoking Bob's anger. Nauseated, I rushed to the bathroom, oblivious to her parting insult. In the living room, I could hear a heated argument between Bob and my sister-in-law, while my mother-in-law comforted me, emphasizing that children are a blessing, and the decision was up to Bob and me. With tears in her eyes, she tried to provide solace, expressing her hope that my sister-in-law would marry and leave as soon as possible. On another day, after a routine OBGYN visit, I took a detour to a popular flower shop nearby. There I bumped into an old colleague, Steve, who still looked up to me despite my departure from our old job. We chatted about work matters and caught up after three years. Steve happily shared his plans to marry his girlfriend later that day. Intrigued about his presence at the flower shop, I soon discovered the reason. Steve handed me a bouquet of baby's breath, explaining that its meaning was gratitude and happiness. He expressed his gratitude for our past interactions and hoped I'd continue to be there for him. Touched by his warmth, I hurried home, eager to share this uplifting encounter with my husband. Upon reaching home, I found my sister-in-law absent. Seizing the moment, I placed the baby's breath in a vase and with my mother-in-law prepared dinner, grateful for the unexpected joy brought by a simple bouquet. The peaceful and joyful atmosphere prevailed with my sister-in-law gone, allowing my mother-in-law and me some quality time watching her favorite TV show. That night, I shared the day's events with my husband, and we went to bed with smiles on our faces. However, the next morning, my sister-in-law returned home with a bouquet of roses, which she casually threw at me, instructing me to put them in a vase before retiring to her room. As I tried to put the bouquet in a vase, I realized most flowers were broken or torn, likely mishandled by my sister-in-law. She later approached, declaring her plans to bring her boyfriend over on Saturday 
and instructing me to dress decently. Her condescending remarks irked me, but the thought of her imminent departure provided some relief. On the scheduled day, Bob and I were out shopping as per my sister-in-law's request. When we returned, the living room buzzed with activity. Upon greeting them, my sister-in-law glared at me, and accidental eye contact with her fiancé resulted in her disapproval. She snapped at me, asking to refresh the tea. As I served tea, she continued her taunts, deliberately spilling the freshly poured beverage on the floor. Bob and I quickly cleaned up, but the atmosphere remained tense. Even her fiancé tried to defend me, but my sister-in-law dismissed him, claiming I was just the maid. The tension escalated, and her fiancé uttered the unexpected, Let's break up. It turned out he was Steve, my old colleague, and the roses she brought home were the ones he had gifted me just days ago. Steve exposed my sister-in-law's lies, revealing his respect for me and apologizing for the baby's breath flower comment. The room fell into disappointment, with my husband glaring at my sister-in-law. In her panic, she desperately sought support from me, pulling on my collar. I firmly shook off her hand, refusing to tolerate her smite remarks any longer. After enduring my sister-in-law's relentless bullying, I finally let my emotions loose. I firmly told her not to come to me for help after all she had done. In a surprising turn, I revealed that it wasn't me who had fertility issues but Bob. He had overcome male infertility, and I was carrying our baby. Enraged at my sister-in-law's comments, Bob demanded an immediate apology and poured tea over her head. For the first time, my sister-in-law was startled and fell on her butt as Bob recounted the truth. Seeking support, she clung to my mother-in-law, but even she had reached her limit. My mother-in-law abandoned her daughter, declaring her the worst and ungrateful. As my sister-in-law ran to her room crying, Steve said he would contact us later and left the house. My mother-in-law hugged me, acknowledging the challenges I had endured, and cried with joy upon learning about my pregnancy. Bob apologized for not protecting me properly, and although it was a tumultuous few minutes, I felt refreshed after expressing my feelings to my sister-in-law. Later, my mother-in-law moved to a senior living community, and the family home was sold. Bob and I decided to move closer to her, wanting her to witness our child's growth. I haven't heard anything about my sister-in-law since. Bob forcefully threw her out of the house, and nobody knows her whereabouts. Steve sent a text, mentioning a letter and flowers, explaining that he had cut ties with my sister-in-law after discovering her infidelity. In the letter, he expressed his gratitude and sincere apologies. Despite the challenging circumstances, I found unexpected relief and learned that actions, whether good or bad, come back to oneself based on how they treat others. I hope my child will grow up with compassion and understanding.